Okay, let's talk about how to multiply square roots. That is the topic of this video. This is going to be just a quick power lesson on uh, square roots and how to multiply. So I got a couple examples, but uh, you just don't want to, you know, see my examples here and be like, okay, I understand this, this is all I need to know. You want to practice this stuff. So when it comes to square roots and algebra, and this is kind of the stuff you learn in algebra, it's very, very important that you get really comfortable with this. Now, what we're uh, definitely not talking about is, oh, okay, I can go into my calculator and take the square root of 10, I get some sort of decimal, then I multiply it by the square root of uh, 2 by going into my calculator and taking the square root of 2. That's not what we're talking about here. So we want to put our calculators away, uh, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is absolutely essential in terms of um, um, algebra and working with square roots, uh, etc. So we're going to talk about some of the main principles here. Uh, multiplying square roots is not that difficult, but um, you know there's some follow-on steps that if you don't do, you will not get the problem correct. But if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video and put your uh, answer in the comment section. I know you can't make a square root uh, symbol, but maybe you could just put in square root, you know, something like that. You know, use that as a little uh, abbreviation for square root. But you can definitely express your answer if you think you can get it right. Put that into the comment section and we'll compare notes here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math, or maybe you really want to get ahead in math, whatever the case might be, Maybe you don't feel like you're getting the right instruction or uh, you don't connect with your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be. I've been teaching math for decades, and my style of teaching is I like to break uh, concepts down into very bite-sized, uh, clear and understandable components so everyone can learn this stuff. So if you really feel like you've, uh, you know, are not capable of learning math or you just naturally have a tough time learning that doesn't have to be the case what you need is a you need clear and understandable instruction and you need a lot of it and a lot of practice so if you're willing to work hard at it you know coupled with good instruction you can be successful in math so if you're at the middle school high school or even college level in terms of mathematics i can definitely help you out now, uh, if you're preparing for some sort of test that has a math section on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplacer, uh, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam. There are so many exams out there that people have to take for all sorts of reasons that have a math section on them. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my homeschool math program and courses, full curriculum, everything you need to uh, be successful in homeschooling. And if you don't have any math notes to study from, you can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want great grades in math, you must take excellent math notes. So start improving your notes and you'll see your grades start improving uh, right along with them. So let's talk about square roots. So how do we do the square root of 10 times the square root of 2? Well, I'm going to show you this in just one second. But first, let's quickly talk about the whole um, property here, okay? So this is the property you need to know in algebra. The square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B, okay? So this is uh, what we want to understand. So when we have two individual square roots, okay, we can... These are the numbers, by the way, A and B. So the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the one big square root of A times B. So we want to interpret this property going this way, and we also want to interpret the property going this way as well. Okay. So in other words, uh, if we look at this square root of A times B, in other words, I can write it this way, the square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. Okay, so what does A times B in this case? Well, this would be factors of a, of a number. Okay, and I'm going to show you why this is really, really important here in a second. But this is the property that you need to understand. Okay, and hopefully you do understand that. Now, uh, let's go back to our problem. The square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B. So here is the problem again now. You know, I've kind of given you the path forward to how to get this right. So what is the answer? Okay, what is the correct answer now? So how many of you think the correct answer is the square root of 20? Okay, 
Well, if you said the square root of 20, oh, it's a square root of 20, that's the, you know, an application of that property. Well, I would say, are you finished? Okay, because if you are done, I'm kind of have to give you a little bit of a sad face, okay? You're like, what are you talking about? Maybe your hair is like this. You just told me what to do. Why are you saying the square root of 20 is wrong? Well, this is not fully simplified, okay? So you want to finish this problem. I said, are you finished, okay? So finish this up if you know how to finish this up so we can get you a nice little happy face here. But let's talk about uh, this specific problem, and we'll do another example. Again, you're going to want to practice this uh, stuff uh, um, beyond these uh, quick examples. Okay, so here we got the square root of 10 times the square root of 2. We're following this uh, property, okay, the square root of A times the square root of B. Uh, we just write one big square root of a times b. So when we follow that, this is one big square root. Uh, here's our a and here's our b, 10 and 2. So we're talking about the, uh, the square root of 10 times 2, which is the square root of 20. So this is good, okay, but we're not done yet, all right? So in algebra, when we're dealing with square roots, you want to simplify, okay? And your, your teacher's not going to be happy if you give them this answer, the square root of 20, they, they expect you to fully simplify these uh, square roots and radicals, okay? So how do you do this? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple of suggestions. If you don't understand how to simplify uh, square roots, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel, my pre-algebra and uh, algebra playlist. Uh, playlist. Of course, I teach this ex extremely uh, thoroughly in all of my algebra courses, but let's uh, talk about how we can simplify. All right, so real quick, what you want to do is look at 20 and try to think of two numbers uh, that uh, factors of 20. And you want to be looking for factors of what we call perfect squares. So things like 4, 9, 16, 25. There's a ton of these type of numbers, an infinite amount of numbers that are perfect squares. Now, why are these called perfect squares? Well, because when I take the square root of these, and we're talking about the principal square root, we don't have to worry about the positive and negative uh, part, although you need to understand it as well. Um, we get these nice, lovely numbers like so, okay? So these uh, numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc., these are what we call perfect squares, okay? So when I look at 20, I'm like, hmm, oh yeah, there's a perfect square in there, it's 4. So I could write 20 as the same thing as 4 times 5. So remember, when I was talking about you can go this way, I can write these fact, I can write a number like 20 in terms of its factors, which would be four times five, and now I could split this up in its component parts, okay? This is kind of like doing the exact reverse. Instead of going this way, now we're going this way. So the square root of four times the square root of five, I can break up like this, square root of four times the square root of five, and of course I just, you know, if I gave you this as a problem, you'd be like, oh, this is the square root of four times five or square root of 20. But what's the, um, uh, at, uh, at the advantage here of writing it this way? Well, I have the square root of 4, and I, I know the square root of 4 is 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 5. So just a quick note uh, um, review here. The square root of 4 is uh, 2, but it's also you can think of it as negative 2. But when, anytime you're working with square roots and whatnot, it all depends on the situation. If you're working with equations, you're going to need to know that the square root of 4 is both positive and negative 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 and negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. So these are uh, uh, both uh, correct. Okay. However, when we're working with problems and it's not really explicit in terms of an equation or something like that, it's okay if you just write what we call the principal square root. It's just the positive part of that uh, square root. So the square root of 4, we can just write as 2, positive 2, times the square root of 5. And this is the final answer. So if you got that right, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with a good old 1985 flat top haircut. Nice job, okay? All right, so let's go on and take a look at another problem and then we'll wrap this up again. Uh, this is not enough practice to um, you know, say, oh, okay, I'm an expert in you know, square roots and everything else and radicals. That's one of the worst things that math students do. Here, let me just show you real quick. So let's say this is your homework, and you have, uh, let's say, 20 problems assigned. 
and you're like, oh, I'm get, I got number one right, uh, number two right, number three right, number four. I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting all these right. I must be an expert, so guess what? I don't have to do the rest of this stuff. It's a waste of my time because I've already proven uh, to myself that I know what I'm doing. That's wrong, 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 okay? Uh, typically, this is like the easy or more basic problems. You need all these problems. To, you're trying to you know, um, establish a math skill, okay? Mathematics in all its little parts is a skill, like what would be an example of a skill like in, in, in sports? Well, like shooting a basketball is a skill or throwing a baseball or hitting a baseball or any type of thing. That requires a lot of practice. And the more you practice, the better you're going to be at it. So math is no different. Okay. So let's take a look at this last problem here. So we're talking about multiplying square roots. So how do we do this one? Well, we have 3 times the square root of 8 times 5 times the square root of 2. Go ahead and see if you can figure this out. Put your answer right in that uh, comment section. But uh, uh, if you don't want to see the answer, go ahead and pause the video and work on this for a quick second. But let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do this. All right, so here, this is a number, and we're going to multiply it by this number. Okay, this, is, this number is being multiplied by this, and this is all being uh, multiplied together. In other words, we have four things being multiplied. Three. 3 square root of 8 means 3 times the square root of 8 times 5 times the square root of 2. So I can, re if I said uh, 4 times 2 times 1 times 2, okay, well, does um, order in multiplication matter? In other words, can I go 2 times 2 times 1 times 4 or 4 times 1 times 2 times 2? You're going to get the same answer. In other words, what I'm saying is, uh, uh, when it comes to multiplication, order does not make a difference, okay? And uh, because that is the case, you can really uh, put 3 times 5, put this, whoops, let's write it, just write it out here. So this could be 3 times 5. You're going to do the number parts right here. And then we could have um, square root of 8 times the square root of 2, okay? So this is a, a equivalent this right here is equivalent to this. I just kind of put things in different orders. So I can multiply the 3 and the 5. Of course, that's going to be 15. Multiply by what? The square root of 8 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 8 times 2. So we have 15 times the square root of 8 times 2, of course, is 16. The square root of 16, the principal square root, square root of 16 is going to be 4. So that's 5 times 4. And of course, that is going to be 60. Okay, so how did you do? Did you get that right? Well, if you got that right, I must go ahead and give you an awesome happy face. We'll just skip the hairstyles for now. And a few check marks. Matter of fact, I'll give you a few stars, though, uh, to make you feel extra special for today. But uh, nice job. Okay. Now, again, this is just the basics of um, multiplying square roots. There's other variety of problems that you're going to want to know. And just remember, math is a skill, okay? And in any skill, you're going to want to just, you know, uh, pr uh, practice more than a few times. Okay? That's the number one mistake that a lot of students make. They're like, oh, okay, I can do, I, I got the first few right. I must be a, a genius at this stuff. Nope. You know, even if you're um, even if you could do all the problems, you've got to continue to practice this so you can get the retention as well because you'll forget this. That's why practice and doing all your practice problems, homework and stuff, as much as you may not like it, it's absolutely critical and necessary in terms of uh, learning mathematics. But if this little video helps you out, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing a bit on YouTube for 10 plus years. That's a long time. Have over a thousand videos, well over a thousand videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus. So if you like my teaching style, again, I'm really trying to teach math in a clear and under understandable way. So if you like that, uh, I have a ton of uh, content on my channel right now, various mathematical topics, and I'm posting uh, stuff all the time. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.